<laughs> Today, we're going to speak about Canon announcement that many are applauding like monkeys. I mean, the cameras, R5, R6, lenses, 800mm, 600mm, both f11, macro 85mm f2. Why are they applauding like monkeys? Because they just hear one thing, video 8K. They don't read the small print and this is what we're going to read together, what many people are not telling. Let's start. First of all, I want to make clear that I do not like to speak about gear I've I have not tested. But so far, there are not many uh, YouTubers or magazines that have been testing this material, this gear. So uh, I have to give my opinion because what I see in general is that they speak about the good things, but then they're not speaking about the small prints, about negative features or features that are short of expectation. So you could tell me, how can you tell that if you have not tried this gear? Why? Because Canon themselves, they write it in their website. Obviously, they don't put it as negative points, but if you read the specs, you know what is getting short of uh, expectation, okay? So it means that uh, it's important that we read that and we state what could be better. Because actually, in my opinion, uh, Canon with these two camera bodies, they're not taking the lead. They're just simply updating to others' level. Uh, what the new features they have put in this R5 and R6 are features that have, should have been in the R and the RP. So they're not taking lead, the lead, they just simply get updated. Second, I do not doubt that the image quality will be good. Why? Because every camera for the last 10 years have good image quality. The only thing that have better is uh, maybe high high so yes that's better and also dynamic range but dynamic range most people cannot see that it's better why because the screen the monitor they're using you don't see the difference not good enough or the support that is being used for publishing the pictures like uh, internet uh, it's up the dynamic range anyway so telling that my camera has a really good image quality is pointless is nonsense for not for canon for any brand and for any camera model because they all are good for the last 10 years so obviously image quality will be good and is probably very good so let's start with the camera bodies r5 and r6 r5 has 45 megapixel and r6 has 20.1 megapix both have full frame sensor i should say 24.36 and uh the market is uh, R5 is thought for professional and R6 is more for professional and advanced amateur. Obviously, anyone is free to buy the camera they want and uh, to use it professionally or uh, in a way of amateur. It has nothing to do with quality. I just speak about the aim uh, Canon is communicating. Obviously, I'm not going to read all the specs. I'm going to sp speak about the one uh, people are actually applauding like monkey and the one that people should read because it may help them to think a bit if the camera is right for them or the use they want to do with it. So if we look at the specs, uh, what they stand out, uh, I'm going to read it and uh, speak, okay? Uh, burst rate, 12 image per second in mechanical uh, shutter and 20 uh, image per second in electronic, uh, electronic sh shutter. Well, this is nothing to, uh, to be happy about, I mean, uh, the competition many cameras are doing better and also uh, Canon on uh, top of the range reflex camera are doing better in mechanical shutter so I don't see what's the point of being like with the best okay then they speak about AK video and then I think uh, things should be clear first uh, AK video normally uh, people don't see the difference with 4K. Even if they have a specific, specific screen for 8K, they don't see the difference. So most people who would like to uh, record in 8K are people that actually uh, work in 4K, but sometimes they want to reframe without any quality loss. So 
People who work normally full-time 4K start to be professional and people who want to record in 8K, they're really professional. So uh, top professional, they normally have all the lenses they need so they don't need to reframe, okay? So this 8K, well, but then 8K must be suitable to integrate in a 4K, even when you reframe. So it means like if I'm recording in uh, 25p or, four, uh, or 24p or 30p uh, in uh, 4K, then I do some uh, 8K and that part I want to do it in slow motion, I must be able to record at twice the speed. Okay, so it means I need 60, 50 or 48p. But this 8K doesn't have it. It gives you 30 frame, 25 frame and 24 frame per second. It means I will be able to integrate it in a normal speed 4K, but not in a slow motion, okay? So that's not that useful 8K. And then you realize that they have prepared this camera telling 8K is great. So if a professional would be interested in 8K, then he's going to look at more things, not just speed, frame rate. He's going to look also at uh, how to get your signal out of the camera to an external recorder or external monitor and they will look at the HDMI. Well, they didn't put a standard HDMI, they put a micro HDMI and no professional want standard uh, micro HDMI because they are fragile and they break easily and if you do intensive use, you want to have a real HDMI output. So, accepting they say, okay, the micro HDMI is okay, then you have a problem. Because this HDMI lets you get an output for 4K from 24 to 60p and Full HD from 24 to 60p, but not you cannot output 8K. So the guy wanted to record in 8K and use an external recorder or wanted to use an external monitor cannot use this, this HDMI output. Second, it does uh, slow-mo. In 4K you can do 120 frames per second and in this case you cannot output either through the HDMI connector. If you look at the R6 it doesn't have 8K. Although people hear 8K, 8K, 8K it's only for the R5. The R6 is able to do 4K 60p and Full HD 120p uh, okay but which is good okay but I remind you that slow-mo, you cannot get it out through the micro HDMI. So it means this camera speak about 8K, but it's not really thought for intensive use or for professional. This guy wants something a lot better. And then you realize it's not thought for professional because they still have a 29 minute limit recording time. Why? Because uh, two reasons. First, uh, this limit before was existing because in Europe there was some extra tax if you recorded more than 30 minutes. And so all makers worldwide was, were limiting uh, to 30 minutes. But this tax doesn't exist anymore. So you can see that Sony has uh, eliminated uh, this time limit, uh, Panasonic also, and some other brand also. So uh, first, uh, they could do that because of overheating problem. Peter McKinnon, uh, in his video about the R5, uh, says a bit about overheating, doesn't tell too much, but he says the word, so I don't know, I've not tried it, but it could be a reason. And also, Canon is doing that to protect his Cine line, the C line. They don't want to lose cells on these cameras, so they do not give you the full uh, shot on this uh, R5 and R6, and Canon has always done that. And then if you look at the slow motion, 120 uh, frames per second, it's limited to seven minutes, okay? Which well, probably not a problem, but people should know that because they speak about 8K, but they don't speak about these limits, okay? So, so far, we've been speaking about video. So, isn't this a photo camera? Why don't people speak more about photography? So I'm going to speak to you about photography. As I said before, I do not doubt image quality is there. So we're going to analyze what they're giving us. First, they now have on IBIS, uh, image in-body in image stabilization, five axes, 
really good. I'm happy about it. They say you get eight stops of uh, stabilization if you use the 24 to 105 millimeter at 105 millimeter. It depends on which lens you're using, combination, body and lenses, you'll get more or less stabilization. First, saying five axes doesn't mean that all five axes are equal. I've made some uh, review or comparison of uh, the Fujifilm X-T4 with the Olympus OM-D5 Mark II that is five years old and the Olympus had far better stabilization. So telling you have stabilization doesn't mean it's good, but assuming it is good, okay, you will not get eight stops on every lens. It all depends on the combination you're using, but that's a good point. It's there. Okay. Then the ISO. From 100 to 51,200 uh, 51, ISO. So, you know, normally you can take out the top two ISO to know what's more or less clean. Uh, but it means that ISO will be probably clean, acceptable at 12,800 ISO, which is far enough for me. For me, with 1600, I'm happy. To 32, 3200, I'm really happy. And that's it. Don't need more. But they're not convincing Eric to get their ISO. They're convincing other brand users. So people now, when they speak about ISO, they speak Sony. And Sony, at 25,000 ISO, you have almost a clean file. And at 51,200 ISO, you have a usable file. So it means that they're probably still two stop behind Sony. I'm not defending Sony. I just say what I read here in their specs. So uh, probably, they are two stops behind Sony still as they were before. They speak about flash synchronization. They say that this camera, the R5, is aimed at professional. Professional want a minimum flash synchronization of 250th of a second. And they give us 200th of a second with mechanical shutter and 250th second on electronic shutter. Normally, you try not to use electronic shutter because you have rolling shutter, so you prefer mechanical. I do not know why Canon, same as on the 5D Mark III I had, has 200th of a second and do not step to the 250th of a second. And now they say this is the leading pro camera and they have not solved that. That's not logical. Imagine you are a wedding photographer and you're going to get your camera with you, the R5, maybe the R6, well, similar, what I'm going to speak about is really similar, a bit, a bit better on the R6, but not that much. And you're probably going to shoot from 2,000 to 300 pictures in a day. It was a time you would shoot 150 pictures. Now there's people that shoot 2,000, 300, uh, 3,000 pictures in one day. But the battery, if using the EVF on one single charge, lasts 220 shots. Yes. So they tell you the EVF is brilliant because you have a refresh rate of 120 frames per second, but then you can do 220 pictures. And then if you want more pictures, they tell you, then you can drop to 60 frames per second. So you're paying for great viewfinder, but then you have to drop the quality to get more pictures on your battery uh, on the single charge. Then you get 320 pictures, which is still little. Then I tell you, yeah, but you can use the LCD screen. Can you imagine doing 2,000 or 3,000 pictures in a wedding uh, and, hold, and holding your camera like this, not against your body, not against your eye? It's not feasible. And then in that case, you get 320 pictures, same as if you have a lower frame rate in the viewfinder. Or if you go for a saving mode, a energy saving mode, you can go up to 490 pictures on this single charge. We still still little and it's not feasible. You don't know what actually what do they deactivate for the energy mode? Uh, no, if you're doing a wedding, you need everything working. So this is ridiculous. It means that if you're a guy, a wedding photographer that does from uh, that makes like from uh, 2,000 to 3,000 pictures, you're likely to need to buy 10 or 12 or 15 batteries to do your wedding. So it means like 10 batteries, probably around 70 euros per battery, 700 euros in batteries. And you're likely to buy maybe 15 to make sure. This is crazy. This is nonsense. And when you want to charge them, you cannot have just one charger. 
because it can take ages, like 15 or full day, 15 hours, maybe 24 hours to charge the whole, whole lot. You need like two, three, four chargers to, to charge several batteries at the same time. So this is ridiculous. How can you tell this is a pro camera and then you, you lack of this uh, battery life? This is ridiculous. And I speak the battery that's included, which is the LPE6NH, supposedly uh, the best battery. I cannot believe these results. This is incredible. I'm not, it's not something I've read somewhere. It's something I've read in Canon website. It's written there. Okay. Then if we speak about pro photographer, professional need to be working in any situation, rain, snow, heat, cold, whatever. Well, this camera works from one degree to 40 degrees Celsius. Now many cameras, that work from minus 10 Celsius, like the Olympus top of the range, they work from minus 10. So uh, can you imagine your pro photographer and you say, ah, I've got a, an assignment uh, to do in the mountain with snow. Oh, sorry, I cannot get my camera with me because uh, it's going to freeze. This is ridiculous. When you look at the Pentax K1 or the Olympus OMD uh, 1 Mark III, you can put it under the tap, the water and clean it and nothing gets in there. And this 85% humidity, it means if it's falling serious rain on the camera, this is a problem. So how can they tell this is pro grade camera when in their own specs, they do not uh, result, they, they, they already say they're not getting pro specs. But they're good specs, but not the leading specs you should expect, okay? So now let's speak about lenses. Well, there are three lenses, the 85 millimeter F2 macro for uh, 750 euros, uh, the 60 600 millimeter F11 uh, for 860 euros, and the 800 millimeter F11 for uh, 12, well, 1,129 uh, euros. I don't have much to tell about the 85 millimeter macro. I think the price is acceptable, is within more or less the market for that kind of quality f2 which is maybe probably too uh, too, sh uh, too shallow depth of field for uh macro but well you can always close the the aperture so that's okay now let's speak about the 600 millimeter and the 800 millimeter many people are uploading 600 millimeter and 800 millimeter but they forget to realize what f11 means okay because this is a problem it means basically there are bottom of bottles that are a bit better you know and that's it so if you look at the uh, sunny 16 rule uh, at iso 100 uh, speed one twenty fifth of a second you get f16 to be uh, properly exposed if you look the other side f11 but normally you don't look at that normally you do nature photography towards the, the ground and you're probably on f8 iso 100 and one twenty fifth of a second f8 it means this lens is open at maximum f11 so you cannot be on 100 iso you need to be on 200 iso okay and then with this focal length no way you get a neat uh, picture uh, at that speed you need to be minimum on 500th of a second normally you get uh, if you're on the 800th of a second you should get uh, if you're on the 800 millimeter you should be on 800th of a second and if you're on the 600 millimeter you should be on six uh, one six hundredth of a second but there is body stabilization so for that focal length i guess they probably stabilize to stop so you're likely to need to be around 500th of a second if you're on the 800 and similar to this on the 600 maybe a bit slower okay so it means you need to be on 800 iso but probably you don't want to be on f11 you want to get a bit more sharp because at maximum aperture you don't get the maximum sharpness so you probably want to be on f16 it means you need to be on 1600 iso to expose properly and on f16 f11 already on the r5 with 45 million pixels you probably have diffraction on the r6 with 21 uh, 20.1 20 million you probably escape okay but on f16 you probably get diffraction on both it means what is diffraction? Well, when you have a lot of, the more resolution you have, the smaller uh, aperture you use, the more uh, the uh, ray of light will be larger 
on the sensor. It means instead of covering just one pixel, it will probably, a pixel of photos it, it will probably uh, cover two, by four, and eight, and like that, and so on. It means if it covers four, it's like your four uh, pixel work as one. It means you don't have 45 million pixel anymore. You have 11 million pixel. And instead of covering four, it covers 16 then you have 4 million pixels, something like this. So it means you're paying premium price for 4,500 euros for this 40 million uh, pixel. But when you use this lens, you're probably down to 10 million real use of, useful pixels. So million pixels. So that's a problem. So you've divided by four your resolution. So this is a problem. Second, uh, if we speak about uh, this picture daytime, well, uh, 1600 ISO, okay, but if we speak about uh, sunset or sunrise, you probably have to be on 6400 or 12800 ISO to get this properly exposed. It means that you're getting in the area where this camera is not as good with ISO. So you've been paying premium price and when you use these lenses, you lose probably resolution you get noise, you don't have the shallow depth of field you wanted when buying a full frame camera, you also use dynamic range. So you spent a lot of money and now you get these lenses to kill this camera that is supposed to be great, okay? So what do I think? I think why is Canon issuing that kind of lenses? But if you look at my video explaining uh, the full frame war, because Canon don't want more client on APS-C, that's the M line, but on this mirrorless line, R line, they want people to go full frame. So to attract them, they've made these two lenses that they seem great for that price, but when you use them, obviously, technically, they cannot be as good. So it means you're going to pay premium price for a camera and then you're going to kill what you're paying with these lenses. And this is not honest. That's not logical. You cannot, this is ridiculous to be to have F11 lenses on this camera. Honestly, I think uh, if you wanted both of these, well, if you want any of these two cameras, what would I say? I would say that the R6 is probably a far better camera in the way that uh, 20 million pixel is, will be better stabilized probably. Uh, you don't have that diffraction problem if you're using these new lenses. Uh, 4K is really acceptable as with the 60 frames per second. I think this is good news. The HDMI out, maybe you need it. And then you can do slow motion with the HDMI output, but well, that's okay. I think it's acceptable. And it's probably a far better, interesting, a far more interesting camera. Battery is a bit better, but 380 pictures, so it's not much more than 320 anyway. But I think the R6 is more interesting camera than the R5. And I definitely think this R5 has not taken the lead on the camera market because what could be really an exceptional camera, they've put some great things. I mean, I didn't speak about the autofocus, all this, and this is good, all this is good. Okay, I speak about these points actually kill the whole story, the whole good point of this camera. I think Canon once more is giving a lot less of what they can do they're still uh, limiting the video capabilities to save, to protect their C-line, and this is not acceptable to me. Obviously, people will think I'm against Canon. I'm not against Canon. I would tell, tell the same thing about any brand and any camera model if I feel this is the way I see right now, okay? So, if you feel this video may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a small button down here and also a small bell. If you click on the bell, you get notified when I upload a new video. My website, erichibo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below. Send me an email to info at erichibo.com. And below, also put links of my gear on Amazon, also links to other parts of my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Bye.